All right, we are live. My name is Jeff Gora from Artist Waves. Hello, everybody. Good Tuesday afternoon. Tuesday? Tuesday. Uh, my guest today is the one and only K Bong, Kevin Bong. Hello, Meredith, who just joined. Uh, hello, Chris Ross 22. What's up? We got uh, Kevin Bong, otherwise known as K Bong, joining us today on Artist Waves live Instagram series. These have been a lot of fun. Uh, we started doing these about three weeks ago. Um, just kind of a random eclectic mix of guests that have joined us for these live interviews. Uh, really excited to have K Bong today. Uh, I love his new music. I love all his music and his just kind of overall vibe. The stuff he's done with Stick Figure. Um, he just is a positive force uh, when when you need him, and even when you when you don't necessarily seek it out. That music is um, is just happy. So I'm I'm really excited to uh, to get that perspective. He's going to be joining us probably in about. Three, four, five minutes, something like that. But in the meantime, I'll, I'll play his new song in the background here. Good to hear music. Anyone heard it? I'm sure you all have heard it. Um, it's it's a really cool kind of upbeat, up-tempo song. Includes Mahalo from Twiddle featured in the song. Um, and it's, it's nice. It just makes you feel good, as much of his music does. So Artist Waves, the voice of the music platform for those who uh, who are not familiar. Hello to everyone who just joined. Um, we are basically focused on the ripple effect of the most positive music out there. And obviously, reggae, dub, everything K-Bong does, stick figure, those guys, um, that exemplifies us perfectly. So, um, I've been listening to a lot of his music lately, and the, some of his, his, uh, his friends. Hello, Nixon. Nixon Nelson. Thanks for joining us. Um, and I, uh, I, gotta, I gotta say, it really just helps you calm down. You know, if you need to be, if you need something to calm your anxiety a little bit, or just make you feel good, Pour a little glass of wine, have a little K-Bong and stick figure guys going. And uh, you feel like, you know what, everything's going to be all right. Mentally, you go somewhere else. You're on that little island with him. Ukulele under a palm tree. And all is, uh, all is well. So this is good to hear music. This is the new song. And I'm um, curious to see if it's going to be part of a larger record that he's working on. Or if he is just releasing this as a one-off. Um, and what's on top I know obviously a lot of people are in this weird in between so alright Cave Bong is in the house let's get him in There he is. K Bong yes. in the house. What's up? What's up? Test what's up, man. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Check, check. How are you? Good, brother. How you doing? I, I mean, yeah, I'm great. I feel I feel good despite everything that's going on. I feel I'm charged up. I'm charged up, man, and it, it feels good. There's a lot of cool things happening with um, my fan base right now, and a lot of really fan bases for a lot of musicians right now. The support is coming in, and it's really cool to see. Right on. Well, we were just we were just rocking your new song in the background and and talking a little bit about uh, what you've been up to. So I'm uh, I really appreciate you joining us today. We're really excited to to get into your world of positivity and uh, music that just makes you feel good and and talk about what you've been up to. Um, so cool. Really really excited to have you, man. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. I was looking at your lineup of musicians that you interviewed, and I'm like, wow, this is an honor to be here. You guys have interviewed. <laughs> So thank you. Right on. Thank you. Well, you know what? Kind of a funny story. You and I, uh, hello to everyone joining uh, while uh, while we're just getting started here, letting, letting people join the uh, the chat. So hello, everyone. Sharp27, what's up? Uh, Maddie May, what? I see. Uh, K 
Gen Genner, Jenner, Stone Tribe. What's up, everybody? It's uh, Jeff from Artist Waves here with K Bong. Um, real quick, last year at the Levitate Festival, you and I were supposed to do a live interview. I did the over the weekend. I did the live interviews in the VIP, and we okay. we didn't have anything solidified, but we were working um, behind the scenes to maybe you and I do a live chat at the end of the festival Sunday night. Okay. Uh, in the VIP and it just our schedules did not I had to be somewhere else and you had to be somewhere else and it just didn't happen so at least so we get to do it now it's cool to <laughs> it's cool to connect now right on I'm glad I'm glad this worked out Thomas had sent me over the email you know linking us up and wanting to do this and I said sure let's do it let's do it why not awesome. I like the I like the idea of the artist waves the brand and how you know we're creating this ripple effect you know out to the world it's pretty cool. I, I really checked out what you guys got started, and I really enjoy it, man. I, it's, like I said, it's appreciated, and it's an honor to be Thank talking you. with you. Thank you. That's, um, that's awesome to hear. Thanks so much. Taylor yeah, Guitars, guitar. the best acoustics are in the house. All right. <laughs> Taylor Guitars, I play. <clears throat> just gonna, I'm, I'll just throw that out there. Um, got that. We're making, <laughs> oh, there we go. Man. Yep. We're right networking. On. Uh, so, so how are you, man? I'm assuming you're you're up out, you're on the West Coast. Um, how is your uh, how is your isolation quarantine life going? What what have you been up to? I know you obviously the the new music came out last week. Other than that, personally, um, you good? What what have you been up to? I've been songwriting a lot. I've been continuing to grow, you know, the K Bong brand and and focusing on how to get that out more and grow the numbers and you know get my music out into more listeners and people that may enjoy it, really focusing on a lot of that, really as well as adapting to what's going on. We, you know, we don't have live shows going on right now. So for me, it's like, how do I take the energy that I'm usually out there doing on stage and how, you know, how can I use that to benefit and, and to like continue engaging the fan base? So taking that energy and doing like live streams right now, this interview, writing new music, it's adapting. So it's been a lot of adapting for me. And I'm seeing it, you know, happen across the entire music industry with musicians. And it's really exciting. Um, a lot of the things that musicians have done every day. I don't know if you're seeing this too, but I feel like every day I pop open, you know, an Instagram feed or something and I see something new that an artist has just come up with. And it's really exciting to see. Yeah, I agree with you. There's been so much cool stuff, even, even doing things like this. I don't, I can't really remember much uh, live interviews or just, people engaging in this sort of way. Um, I guess if there's a positive of, of a lot of this madness, this type of stuff happening has been really helpful and, and um, creative, creative way to, to make people feel, feel good and get your music out there. Um, so how, how did your plans change in terms of like, how did you have to pivot? I know you were coming off of a tour, but yeah. anything that you had to, to like reshape in terms of what you're gonna be up to for the summer and, and new music coming out? Well, dude, I got I got incredibly lucky with my K Bong tour. It was my second K Bong solo tour, and that happened in February. I got extremely lucky with getting all the dates. You know, we did all the dates we had on the routing, and it was just like a week after that tour ended when everything started really getting you know kind of wild. And I had a lot of friends who had to cancel their tours in you know April, so in March and April. So got really lucky with that February tour. It is a bummer that our stick figure tour has been postponed you know yeah. um, but nothing we can do about that situation but when i start to talk about it when i start to tell people you know oh yeah what's up with your summer tour what's going on i'm like well you know it's you know dates are postponed and stuff because of what's going on and i start to think about that i'm like man that would have been such a good time you know but we're like i said we're adapting you know we're adapting the best way we can and it's been cool to see a lot of bands going full band live on a live stream which is the next thing that i'm working on right now so i've done a lot of acoustic live streams and the next thing i'm working on is getting my my band together to do a full band cable on live stream so oh that's awesome that'll be great yeah you know you mentioned yeah you mentioned the stick figure tour and then obviously that's happening to so many people um unfortunately today our, one of our mutual grounds the levitate festival um which um, you guys obviously with stick figure would have been there again uh, um they they announced that they're postponing but you know what they did? They did something pretty cool. I mean, I love, shout out Levitate. Shout out um, to Levitate, Levitate Fest. Levitate, they're, 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 I'm local, I'm close to them. So they, uh, 
they mean a, they, they mean a lot to me and, and artist waves but anyway um what they did today was something really cool is they took the perspective the position of we're postponing a year we're gonna te- we're gonna keep the same lineup as best we can jack johnson's still heading headlining i know you guys will still be there um it's just getting pushed back 365 days instead of yeah instead of a lot of what a lot of other festivals are doing and this is not any fault of theirs but just saying it's canceled you know we, we just can't do it um i liked their perspective of like you know we're gonna do this it's just gonna be it's gonna be next year and we're gonna and it's gonna be twice as good so um it it was that was a cool way of of positioning it and, uh, and i'm sure every it made everybody obviously a little bit sad but in the same regard like there was a lot of love in that announcement definitely yeah shout outs to levitate festival for sure it is an incredible time at the levitate festival marshfield fairgrounds out east it's always a yep. good time but it's hard yeah it's difficult i mean we can't there's just we there's a lot of the situations are out of our hands you know so yeah but i look forward well, to that one five days right on it'll be better than ever it'll be twice <laughs> as good um yeah. so i, I wanna, i'm curious though like with just taking a step back with you um i'm infatuated by hawaiian culture even though i'm i'm on the east coast i i've been to hawaii mm-hmm. just just once spent two weeks there and i met so many people in and around the music and art scene that were like, I just came here and I never left. I had someone pack up my apartment and send it out to me, which I'm sure is, is some people like and some people don't. But you're going back to your roots. What was <laughs> what was your start in music? Like how much was the Hawaiian culture and the music scene a part of your upbringing? And how did you get started? My first instrument was the ukulele, you know, and I being in Hawaii and having that option to learn the ukulele, that was that was cool. And I, I encourage, if you're learning an instrument for the first time, I encourage you to start on the ukulele. It's such a fun instrument to learn and it feels great. And you got four strings, you know, versus the six on the guitar. But that was my first instrument. And, you know, I think growing up in Hawaii definitely led to that. I, I don't know if I would have had that experience if I was growing up somewhere else. But music is such a big part of the Hawaiian culture. I'd say I had probably one in three friends that played music or sang, you know, that I grew up with. And reggae's playing on the radio there. And you know, you've got hula in the Hawaiian culture. And, and you know, a lot of it, it just, it's a big heartbeat of, of Hawaiian culture. Music really flows there. Yeah, I love ukulele. Uh, I have one in the house. I don't know how to play it that well yet, but just the sound, it makes you, it's, it's kind of synonymous with just like being happy, with happy music, with, with good vibes. So um, definitely. Yeah, so you're right. It's a unique, it's an awesome instrument. So then, you know, one of the things I'm jumping ahead a little bit, and if and if you, um, you, you obviously you play a lot of different instruments. You play ukulele, you play the the guitar, you play the keyboards and stick figure. How yeah. did all of your experience and all of your different um, multi dimensions in the world of music lead you to meeting Scott and to be coming into the and jumping into that stick figure world? So, so Scott, so I met Scott in about 2009 in San Diego and yeah, I, I played the ukulele and then I ended up picking up the guitar. And then when I moved to San Diego, I, play, I picked up the bass and I played bass in a reggae band. And so I started getting this sort of knowledge and this was all under the reggae umbrella. So I started getting this knowledge of, okay, this is what the guitar does in reggae. This is what the bass does in reggae. And so when it came to Scott, you know, Scott came into San Diego and he had produced two records at that point. He was looking to form a band and he, you know, he put it out there. I was looking for a keyboard player. I saw that and I thought, you know, I could I could transfer over to keyboards. And so I gave it a shot. He gave me a shot. and I'm super grateful for that. And that's just kind of where, you know, that for me took off and being part of the success of Stick Figure has been an awesome and amazing ride. But I always tell people like reggae for me was like learning a sport. Like if you understand basketball, like I understood reggae, I can play, you could play center, you could play point guard, you could play forward. So my sport, I understood reggae so I could play the bass, I could play the keyboards and, and stuff. So it transferred over really well, you know. Now, if you asked me to play keyboards in like, um, you know, a metal band or a rock band that I wouldn't, I'd be at square one. I'd really have to read those patterns and those rhythms, you know. That's a cool way of thinking of it, though, and uh, being versatile like that and being able to pick up multi different en- instruments and, and being flexible. That's um, 
that's important. That's pretty cool. Hi, everyone who's just joined. I see uh, to, to Chris Ross. I see Luis. I see Fred, STO, and Nance. Um, I see a couple uh, Trouble Love, 702. What's up, everybody? Thank you for, for chatting with us on what is a Tuesday. Um, I got to ask you, too. One of the things I noticed about about the greater stick figure, and I guess this is maybe applicable to the entire reggae community, um, is how collaborative everybody is. Supportive, collaborative, and grateful uh, everybody is to be in the world of music and to be with each other. If you look at just mm -hmm. the group that you um, that you collaborate with and tour with with stick figure, and even your 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 solo material, which is amazing. Everybody, everybody is really supportive of each other and you feature each other in your different songs. What is it like for you? And like, how crucial is it to be like within a part of a community that does that as opposed to just, you know, being focused on your own individual music? Yeah, I just want to let that question and statement like just ride right there. That was so nice. <laughs> for anyone that heard that entire statement and question i mean that oh, it's, it's such an it's it really makes me feel good to be part of this scene for that reason you know we have an incredible community you know fan base people that are going and supporting us and supporting that the same i love seeing the same I'll see the same fans that are at, you know, a stick figure show, they're at a K-Bong show, they're at a Revolution show, Iration show. And then even these smaller reggae bands that are coming into the scene, they're supporting those bands too. And it's amazing. It's just amazing to see, yeah, that, that appreciation for the music, the appreciation for each other. The fans are looking out for each other. You know, there's the fan groups on Facebook and stuff and everyone's, you know, seeing what they can do to let's carpool to the shows and let's do this. So I'm loving on that, on the community fan base side. And then on the artist side, yeah, there's, bunch of collaborations and it's almost like you know i get the mentality of like how can we you know with this song that I, we just came out with good to hear music featuring mahali it was like how can i you know we worked on this together we collabed how can i get your name out there as well and you know i respect what you do like here's this track i'd love to have you on it and you see that so much within our, our community for sure and it's yeah. it is an amazing thing to be a part of and then when it comes to like a live festival like levitate you know, then it's like, hey, we did the song together. Let's jump up on stage. And so, you you know, it's amazing to share the stage and, and do those songs live as well. Well, it's so cool. I mean, that's one of the things that I love about Levitate and even this this area um, is that that happens. Like when I hear your music and I hear, you know, Twiddle and some of the others, it's just like, it's like the backtrack to, to Levitate. It's just like, you feel like you're walking into that place and it's just like, it's a weekend like nothing else. And I'm sure you have that, in a bunch of other places but it's just like when i was listening to uh your entire catalog a lot lately you're it's just synonymous with feeling good like with being with being happy and being grateful um and the same holds true i guess for that for that entire festival but mm -hmm. one thing i gotta ask you is and i think it's kind of applicable to to the current climate the you know what, what we're all doing right now listening talking from our from our homes um, from you know a room secluded somewhere mm -hmm. how you're, there's such a positive message in your music and your approach right mm -hmm. and when you are I don't know if that's your natural existence if you if you have um, trained yourself for lack of a better term to always feel grateful and take advantage of uh, to mm -hmm. get the most out of the current situation but what do you do personally or professionally or artistically when you are feeling the opposite, like when you're just feeling down or there's like, right now is obviously a super high anxiety uh, time period. Uh, what do you do? What are things that you do that make you transform into the person that we know as K-Bong through music? That, that's such a good question. What's up everybody? Shout out to everyone tuning in. I'm kind of under the flight path. So pardon if there's a, there's a kind of a plane going overhead right now, but that oh, is no, a great so because, you know, I, I think part of it does come naturally to me. I have this natural enthusiasm and this natural happiness and this natural positivity. I just, I feel really fortunate for the situation that I had as a kid. You know, I had grandparents that were really supportive and really loving. And I still have, you know, some of my grandparents are still around. 
my father, you know, my brother's super inspirational. He runs a record label in Hawaii. I've got a lot of people around me that support me and in growing up in the places that I grew up, you know, Hawaii and then moving to San Diego, like all these places and just the situation for me, I feel really fortunate and grateful for that. Now, yes, there are definitely times when I need to, I need to recharge, you know, or I'm like, something's getting me a little bummed out. I don't tend to stay in that spot too long. I, I, but when I do ever get in that, I just take time. You know, I take time. I take time to chill out. I, I take time to maybe listen to some music. I do, I practice yoga as much as I can. And that really, really helps with kind of resetting and balance, especially when you're taking a class with a teacher who's, I don't know if you have experience with yoga, but I love when the teachers are saying, you know, let's focus on the breath. Let's, let's breathe, you know, block out everything that's going on. Let's for, for a moment, for this one hour, you're on your mat, like let go of all the stresses. So for me, yoga is like crucial in helping me reset and recharge to get back, you know, if I'm feeling down, you know, and it happens to everybody. You know, a lot of people, they'll see me and like, yeah, you're the happiest guy in the world, man. You're like, well, you never did. But still, like, I need to recharge too, you know, I need to recharge too. And for me, it's just about taking time and taking time for myself and treating myself a little bit. Like, I'm, I'm gonna go out to lunch, just get something I want to get, you know, and just kind of take, make sure to take care, take care of my, my mental state and my body and, and doing whatever I can to do that. And music is crucial, man. When I, when I stress out sometimes or I'm feeling down day, I just pick it up. I just pick it up and play. And that's one thing I encourage for people too that are just learning, like the the amazing thing that happens when you just, you know, you just you just play, you play, and, and yeah, that's a beautiful thing. I totally agree. I I totally have been doing the same thing, and um, and getting into that, just take a time out, you know, take a break, put on music like yours, put on put on some sort of uh, up tempo reggae, Bob Marley whatever it is uh, to yourself and, and just take a second. It sounds so, it sounds like, like too basic almost like, no, there's gotta be, there's gotta be something <laughs> more than just unwinding or unplugging for a minute. But sometimes, you know, yeah. like, and put your headphones on and then uh, especially now, I think, I think you're right on. Um, I heard a pretty cool line the other day that was like, was it like even electricity poles need to rest every once in a while. So like, okay, maybe all the electricity poles are just, taking a taking a time out for a minute so um but you know what's cool too is <laughs> right on you know what's cool too is um you i i imagine with a song like good to hear music which you put out last friday i can't i imagine that when you wrote it um you and molly got together you would have probably not envisioned correct me if i'm wrong but you would have never thought that maybe it's going to be released in this amongst this kind of crazy time like this, unless you wrote it, unless I missed something and you wrote it for this given situation, but I would assume that you would never have thought that it's gonna get launched into the world and into your fans during a time like now. But I think it kind of speaks to what you were just saying. And it's, it's just a very simple breath of fresh air title, good to hear music. And I've been thinking a lot about this because I've been listening to the song a lot just because it, it makes, me, makes me calm down, makes me feel good. Um, nice. And there's a line in the chorus where you're saying, it's good to hear music playing in my town. And, you know, like, it, I have this vision in my head when I hear that line, and maybe it's different for, for everybody of like, I see these, like the people play music on their balconies in like in France and in Italy. And I have a friend who lives in, in Venice Beach out in California. And two days ago, he sent me a, um, a video of someone going down a, I don't know, a canoe or some sort of little rowboat down the, the Venice canals, just playing music. Nice. And like that, so that line, it just, it makes, it's a spirit, I guess, you know? Um, what is it like for you to have that message in this song right now? That's, that's a good question. Ben, you're a great interviewer. <laughs> Thank you. It, music, definitely, it's, it's, like, it's kind of piggybacking on the last thing I said about when I'm getting down or I'm feeling stressful, I pick up my instrument, pick up an instrument, pick up my guitar and just play. And, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's the statement. Good to hear music. It's, it's, I guess, yeah, I couldn't come at a more crucial time now because the music, like listening to music and a lot, which is cool. A lot of people are, are dancing there when I'm doing live streams and like, yeah, we were dancing in our living room. And a lot of people have, you know, you got YouTube queued up on your living room TV now. And, 
dancing and listening to music and playing music, it's definitely a really nice balance to this right now. And we use music as, you know, like uh, sometimes an escape, you know, and then the lyrics, they really help us get through what, it, you know, these situations that we may, we may be going through. So it's crucial. This song, yeah, the music is crucial at this time. Yeah, it, it, it certainly is. And it's, it's really, um, it's really cool to have that sort of message with, with your, your vibes, uh, you know, out there right now for people to, to hang on to and make them feel good. I'm curious, how did this song come to be like with Mahali? I mean, that's just another example of what we were talking about. You know, he's yeah. a guy, I don't know if he still lives there, but we're talking about um, Vermont, you know, uh, an yeah. artist that, that, sh that shares your, your spirit and your, your genre but is on the totally opposite coast. Like you fold the continent in half and meet in the middle or something. Like how does, <laughs> how does, yeah, like, um, how does, how did you guys connect and, and end up collaborating here? I love his line in the song, representing my home VT. Yeah. <laughs> Shout outs to Vermont. So yeah. we, we, actually it was leading up to the Levitate Festival. I was out on the East Coast a week before Levitate Festival. I was okay. with Johnny. Cosmic, shout out to Johnny Cosmic. He's also a member of Stick Figure and an incredible yep. producer. So him and I Johnny, had a K Bong. What's up, Johnny? Shout mm -hmm. out to Johnny. Him and I had a K Bong and Johnny Cosmic show. It was like a duo that we were doing. We we're going to do an acoustic duo show uh, at a festival on the western part of Massachusetts. Fortunately, rain like canceled that event. But we had a week before that in leading up to Levitate, and I had this song. I had good to hear music. I had the idea. I had the chorus, and I was like, Mahali is someone that I've always wanted to collaborate with. We toured with Twiddle at the beginning of 2018. It was Twiddle and Stick Figure. So that was my, was my introduction to him, and I always thought, man, what a talented guitar player. What a great lyricist, a great vocalist, someone I want to collaborate with. When I had the idea for this song, it just – sometimes you have a song, and you think this artist – would be you know ideal for the track i think it's kind of his vibe so we contacted mihali and in that week leading up to levitate we ended up detouring and going up through vermont and what a beautiful state vermont is in the summertime man it is up there but twiddle's front of house guy samuel johnson shout out to samuel he lives in sort of this farm a farmhouse that he put a studio in so we met there sam called up russ lawton on the drums russ lawton plays drums for trey anastasio's solo band trey, the trey anastasio band yeah. they called up a bass player friends and then sam's two roommates played percussion so i mean everything just came together so nicely and we tracked the song live from which for me was a little bit of a different process to have a full band everyone's plugged in let's hit record and let's go and for me it was an incredible experience because i had in my left ear i had mahali and my right here i had johnny cosmic i had my acoustic guitar down the center i mean we had played with the panning for this recording and i'm i'm just like losing it and flipping out like this is insane this is amazing it was fun to see mahali take his guitar solo takes over and over. We did a total of seven takes and then we took all the best stuff and put it together to hear the studio, you know, into the studio version of the song. But to hear Mahali work and Mahali come up with different licks and say, is that working? Okay, maybe, is that working? Oh, maybe I'll try this, maybe I'll try that. And we just let him do his thing. And for me, watching that was, an, was a great experience. The jam band scene to me is, is something growing up in Hawaii and having that kind of originate on the East Coast with fish and all this stuff in Vermont. You know, for me, it was a little more foreign being in Hawaii. I knew the reggae really well. I knew the island stuff. So to get more familiar with the jam band scene and release this song, I'm, I'm so pumped on that. I'm so, so happy for that, you know. You know, it's exposing K-Ball music to, to, you know, other fans and listeners and vice versa with Mahali, you know. People had never heard of Mahali. And then they, he just dropped a solo record recently. So people are now like, good to hear music featuring Mahali. Awesome. Who's Mahali? Check that out. Wow, he's got a solo record. Shout outs to Mahali. Check out his solo record if you haven't heard it yet. They check that out, and it's really yeah, it's good awesome. sound. music. Yeah, that's uh, that's cool. That's that's a fascinating. I love hearing the the behind the songs of how things come together like that, um, and to hear that they kind of started out here uh, around that time last year. D do you find it interesting being when you're out here for Levitate or going through Vermont, like like you were coming from Hawaii and, and San Diego and and that that type of culture with the music that you grew up in and started playing, how much that is, uh, how profound and how important and how popular for lack of a better term it is in an area like 
like Marshfield and Vermont, like that, that, and that takes a perfect example. I keep bringing it up, but it's, um, it's such a crucial part of the, that certain pocket of culture here, <laughs> whether it's the surf community and, and people just take to it. Is that kind of, what's that like to discover that in areas of the, of the country or even the world where you wouldn't necessarily think that, oh, wow, you know, like coming from Hawaii and the West Coast, like people, that means a lot to people here too. Yeah, definitely. Shout outs to Olympic for tuning in. My boy Olympic just tuned in. And all the other people that are just shout outs to everybody. It was it was really, really cool to see. And I felt like that week we were in Vermont, I really was able to not only have that studio session, but I really embraced and like absorbed the culture of what was going on. Cause we had gone into Burlington, we had walked around in Burlington, we got lunch with Sam who runs who has the studio and Mahali, we got lunch with them. We kind of soaked in the, the vibe of Burlington. And I'm just tripping out like, wow, this is really cool town. You know, they got the college there. The lake is there. Lake Champlain. Is that what it is? Lake yep. Champlain. And I'm, I'm taking that all in. And then uh, one of the key, uh, the keyboard player, shout outs to Ryan of Twiddle. He runs a bar in, in Burlington. And there they've got live music. So we went out to the bar one night and Ryan's playing music. And there's other artists that are playing music. And I'm, then I'm realizing... It's kind of like Hawaii in a sense, where you go to Hawaii and a majority of people play music, they sing. There's so many great musicians and artists in Hawaii, you know, have chops on the ukulele and it's all based around their reggae and that island feel. You go up into the Vermont area, it's kind of similar. I swear there are so many guitar players that are crazy talented because they've been so influenced by Fish and that jam band scene. And there's a new band coming out that's uh, on the scene making waves, Pigeons playing ping pong. That's a yeah, big yeah. one going fiddle and it and that's so inspiring to all these kids and they pick up the guitar and the first thing they want to learn is how to shred like tray you know or how to shred mm -hmm. and that was that for me was really cool to experience and see I'm like wow there are so many talented guitar players up in this area and it's all based around that jam scene and it was foreign to me growing up in hawaii i, I didn't really experience it much growing up in hawaii so it's cool it's to cool see. see yeah it's really cool to see how the music and the cultures kind of come together and how they inspire each other you know, like one of my favorite tunes of yours is Middle of the Ocean. And I first heard it, I think, by someone covering it in Vermont, um, like a little local outdoor street festival. And I looked it up and I was like, oh, that song is so great. Like, it's just it, it kind of talks about what we're everything we're talking about, just feeling good on, a, you know, and, and, and we were nowhere near an ocean. <laughs> we were nowhere near an ocean. But still, um, it's Wait, uh, on the street in Vermont. Like someone was covering it? Yeah, yeah. Is that, yeah no yeah, way. It was, it was <laughs> like a, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I can't remember exactly where it was. Um, it was outside of Burlington, but it was like a summer, like kind of a street festival of a cover band playing, but all that type of music, you know, like everyone looking like they're coming straight from a beach, but there really wasn't a beach right there. But it was just a very happy, uplifting, um, everyone has a drink outside, walking around, kind of a street fair type of vibe. Um, and that was the first time I heard it. So, so I think that's, uh, it talks to what we were saying. Um, I got to ask you one more thing. And I'm also, if it's cool with you, I, I would love yeah. if, if some, anyone wants to fire in some questions to K Bong, if we have a few more minutes, I could pick a few out and we could, we could share a few questions for those yeah. who are, cool. who are uh, tuning in. So, um, yeah, so fire away. Any, uh, any questions if we have some time with, I'd love to, uh, I'd love to pick a few out. Um, one thing I want to ask, because I play a little bit too, and I'm curious with people that when people play, have a, a wide array of instruments that they can play well. Um, yeah. How do Multi you, yeah, like you play guitar, you play ukulele, you play keyboards, obviously, uh, incredibly well. When you're writing and you're, and you're just, you're writing for yourself, you're writing a song, how how do you know which instrument you want to start with? Like, do you pick up an, is your, do you have a method of always picking up the acoustic or you're going to lay down some melodies on the keys or, oh yeah, sure. Really, yeah. Acoustic, <laughs> I really like the acoustic, it's so nice. Do you have an Artist Waves theme song yet? Uh, if, uh, we don't, but if you want to write one, I would be more than honored. <laughs> waves, we're making artist waves. We interviewing musicians across the world. Ripple effect. That's the start of it. That's the theme of it. Something That's like all that. perfect. 
<laughs> Amazing. Amazing. The, yes. The guitar is the most, I'm most comfortable with the guitar. But it's cool, it's cool to like sit down to a piano, especially if it's a real grand piano and, and play on that and write. There's just a different, a different experience that you have with the piano. And that's something that I've, tried, I've been doing a lot more lately is, is try to come up with ideas on the piano. Because I, I feel like it's a different, it's like flexing, it's like, it's just, I'm going at it from a different perspective in my mind, you know? But this is my comfort item right here. <laughs> right on. Amazing. And someone just sent in a question, asked, is, is, is your go-to acoustic a Taylor? Um, it is. It is, right? Yeah, there this is. is the Taylor Academy guitar. And this is one of my favorite guitars to play. It's got this beveled edge right here that you rest oh, wow. your arm on, which I'm like, what? How am I only seeing this now? You know, all guitars I feel like should be made. Because sometimes I just remember playing, when you're playing so long on the edge, and then you, you look at your elbow and it's got that like line right there, you know? Okay. But it, Taylor makes incredible guitars from any, you know, they have these crazy expensive guitars, but even their entry level guitars are, they're so nice. You said you had a. Yeah, the sound oh, did we cut out? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I, for a second, but I think we're good. We're back. Yeah, the sound on, yeah. on a Taylor. Yeah, the more affordable tailors, like they sound incredible. It's crazy. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, I totally, totally agree. I love them. I love them. Um, what, what was my college? major in college? <laughs> nice. It was art major. I was an art major with an emphasis in graphic design, which has come in super handy with my music career. I'm, oh, cool. it's a, I'm grateful for that. I have the, there's a little bit of an understanding of, of graphic design, what it takes to you know, I, it applies so well in the music industry. Fires, album art, all the banners and all the things you need to do on all the different platforms, you know, to create your brand and put that stuff out there. Really, since this quarantine, is one of the things I've really been doing is focusing on the, the branding and the marketing and kind of approaching uh, my career from an artist like management side, you know? How can I continue to push the brand forward? How can I expose, you know, get the music out there and continue to the fans and all that stuff. And it's been really, really fun. I have that in one hand and then I have songwriting and creativity in the other hand and like those two combined sprinkling with the graphic design um, knowledge up there. It's, it's been really fun to, to do all that. I feel grateful. I got to shout out the fans too and all the supporters who've, you know, followed stick figure journey and then now are with me through my solo career. I really appreciate everybody for supporting and engaging and the response when good to hear music came out was, I just felt really good about that. So. Yeah. I, um, I, I agree. I think it's awesome to, to see what's happening with your music. Obviously, it's, it's uh, much deserved and good to hear music was so, it was so timely as we talked about. Um, two cool questions that just popped in. One was, uh, have you ever played Australia and might you in the near future? Oh, is that person tuning in from Australia, I wonder? Ah, that's a good question. Can, I, can you put us up at your place if we go? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'll, uh, I'll be... The new Coco, the, the tour dog. <laughs> there you go. Dude, Australia has an incredible scene. I really like what Australia has going on. John Butler Trio is like one of those big artists from Australia. Tosh Sultana is another successful artist from Australia. And then you have all these other artists that have a similar style. I grew up listening to a lot of Jack Johnson. And I think that, that I mean, he's he's been so influential worldwide. But there's that scene in Australia where it's this sort of surfer, like kind of like acoustic, mellow style music. And I've been seeing, I've gone down a rabbit hole recently on Spotify. There's one artist, Ziggy Alberts. Does, it, does that ring a bell for you? Yeah. Ben ha uh, well, Sticky Fingers is another one. They're a little bit, they're more versatile with their stuff. But Australia has a really exciting scene and a lot of great music is coming out of Australia. So I'd love to go there. Awesome. I've that'd, not. Be, that, that'd be a perfect match. Um, we got a question from, from FG Owizzi that wants to know your, I think I'm saying that name right, uh, your biggest inspirations and who have been your biggest mentors? Oh, that's a great question. Scott Woodruff, stick figure, great mentor. Thomas Cousins, our manager, great mentor. Biggest influences, Jack Johnson, Jason Mraz. Those were two big ones for me. Bob Marley. Damian Marley, I really liked Damian Marley's music. Steel Pulse, Steel Pulse was a huge. At one point in my life, I told myself I could listen to Steel Pulse on repeat for the rest of my life. <laughs> you know, it's just it, they just they just hit yeah, me. Amazing, yeah. Well, and and 
being in Hawaii and, and listening to Damian Marley and Steel Pulse and Bob Marley for me, it was just a great soundtrack. When I when I first first started playing music, dude, Green Day and Blink One Eighty Two were huge influences on me, you know. And I still revisit their music sometimes, and you know, I love what music does when you revisit one of those songs that you heard back in the day, and you you immediately are like transferred back to that place. And I love that. I agree. I um, I share many of the same influences, especially, um, you know, the whole Jack Johnson world. That, by the way, did you see his? Uh, his virtual festival last weekend. He held a fest, the Kakua festival. Uh, yeah, it was last I, Saturday. That was awesome. I hope it's on replay because I didn't. I missed the. I missed it. I missed the live okay. thing. But I hope I watch it. But I've seen and I've heard the music from those festivals in the past, and it's incredible what he has. All the collaborations going on with like Eddie Vedder and Dave Matthews yeah. Band. Got the local artists like Paula Fuga and John Cruz, local artists who had success in Hawaii and then seeing all the collaborations and shout out to G love G loves out there and G loves doing his thing. I actually had the pleasure of writing a song with G love just last week. And this is one of the things that I've been doing a lot. Everyone's on FaceTime. Everyone's on zoom. Everyone's talking from home. I'm hitting up a lot of my musician friends and I'm saying, Hey, do you want to have an hour songwriting session? Like there's no, we don't need to like, it's going to be for this record. It's going to be for that record. Let's just get on for an hour. Let's talk, let's catch up and let's see if we can write a song together. You know, Oh, that's awesome. Had, I, I, I had, uh, had G-Love on a, a week and a half ago. Him and I him and I did this. I love G. He's the man. Yeah. That's he's so been cool. doing a great, real big inspiration. He's adapted really well. And that's what I was saying in the beginning. Like, we just, that's what musicians are doing and have to do right now is just adapt. Adapt, yeah. you know. And he's, a, well, with his hunker down set going live on his social media. And he's being part of that Kakua jam. And he was on your thing and just... He announced something really cool that got a lot of resp good response from the community where he's doing a kind of a private party, like a private house mm -hmm. party. Live stream will be for you and like 50 of your, fr up to 50 or 100 of your friends on Zoom. But it's like a party that you're, this person's, I thought that was really cool. You know? I saw that too. What, what a great idea. What, yeah. a, what a really cool idea. And he's the, he's the perfect person, the perfect music uh, to, to do that or to kick that off. It's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, and I'd love to do that. I might get that in the works for anyone out there tuning in or listening. Um, definitely want to continue to do stuff like that. And if you're just tuning in, I'm working on a, a full band K-Bong set that's going to be on live stream. So look out for the details on that. And I'll be going live this week a few more times. Just maybe randomly a little bit, like, right, you know, on IG Live. I've, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. So Awesome. Can't wait. Um, one more question that I spotted that I want to ask you, if you don't mind, because I'm really curious myself. Somebody asked, what would, you, what would you recommend for someone who just wants to start playing ukulele? Is there a specific brand or how, if you were never played before, you were going to pick one up, what would you do? Oh, I know there's so many ukulele options on, <laughs> online. There's a bunch of brands. I play on Kala, K-L, or K-A-L-A. I've played on Lani Kai ukuleles and they have a wide, those two brands have such a wide variety. Shout outs to Kala. They have a wide variety of ukulele options. So you can get one, you know, hundred bucks, $200 range. That'll be solid for you. You know, or you could go up to more expensive. And if you're trying to get like a boutique ukulele, like handcrafted, there's, there's, there's a bunch of brands in Hawaii. Kamaka is probably one of the most prestigious brands in Hawaii that makes ukuleles. Oh, cool. So yeah, so you know you can send you can send me a D, uh, direct message on Instagram for this person out there that wants more information. I can give you more information, and I also encourage you right now. I am doing online lessons, and ukulele is one of my favorite lessons to give because it's the instrument that I started on, and it's so much fun. So you can go and if you have a pen and paper handy for the people that are tuned in right there, backstagemusiclessons.com slash kbong music and there i'm doing ukulele lessons piano lessons guitar lessons songwriting but my favorite sessions lately have been the songwriting sessions and the ukulele lessons and songwriting has been great because they have the people that i'm working with they, they want they want to write a song and it's like all right well let's talk about your life let's talk about your dreams let's talk about your experiences let's talk about your inspiration all these things that you're absorbing in because you're absorbing it in and then let's put it out in song form so i'm helping people organize their ideas and get out really what is already inside of them, you know, but I'm helping to encourage and organize and, and, you know, get that out and put it into a song form. It's been really, really fun. So if anyone's interested in that backstage music lessons.com slash K music. Oh, that's awesome. I may, I may be hitting you up. 
I may be, I yeah. may be looking for a lesson myself. For sure. For <laughs> so, sure. You, know, you made me think of one more thing. So this is what I do. I say one more question, and then I ask at least four more questions. Okay. <laughs> um, All good. Um, if you guys say one other thing I was I'm really curious about that you made me think of, if you're yeah. working on material for yourself, your solo record, a solo song, but you're yeah. also collaborating, let's say, you know, Scott sends you something for Sick Figure or um, you get to put some keys down for something else. How do you know when you're writing whether or not you want to hang on to it for your own personal songbook, uh, your solo record, or if it's something like, okay, that's a melody that goes well with a stick figure song or something like that. How do you, how do you navigate that? That's a good question. Definitely the vibe, the vibe of the song kind of determines, you know, if I, if it's more catered to like a hip hop reggae song, I start thinking dirty heads or I start thinking, you know, who are some of the artists that kind of borderline on the hip hop reggae thing. Or if I'm doing this sort of like slow down, like I just came up with this, this piano riff and chord progression recently. And I thought right away, I was like, I got to show Scott this song, you know, because it had more of that dreamy, slow down, um, stick figure feel, you know, and for the song that I wrote with G love, a couple of weeks ago, I had the song and I was like, man, this feels like a G Love track. Like, and, and the lyrics were inspired by sort of the time that's happening right now. But I'm just going to show you real quick and all the people tune in if that's cool. Awesome. Please do. It will be all right. Long as the sun will shine. We'll make it to the other side. I got a feeling we'll be all right. Long as the sun will shine, we'll make it to the other side. So I had that and that chord progression, and I just heard. Oh, that's G great. I heard, you know, harmonica. And I could hear him like, yo, yeah, we got to keep on moving and, you know, you know, with the rapids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We always staying inside for so long. I can't wait till this ends and we break out and I see and I walk into the sunshine. Yeah, come on. Yeah, everybody sing it. Let's go. You know, oh, so. that's amazing. I was like, I got to show G Love this track. And so a couple of weeks ago, I showed him the track and we finished it. We got a whole song. I'm excited. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. So that, that one's going to be on the upcoming K-Bong album, which is in the works right now. Johnny Cosmic is spearheading the production and the mixing. And I, I yeah, that's right now my process is I'm, I'm just coming up with demos right now or I'm coming up with song ideas any little tidbit you know any little tidbit I'm, I'm recording it and writing down and we're gonna go into the studio and get a live band together when it, whenever whatever the, the gates open up for that so you know hopefully June or July or August but the more time in between because I'm not in a rush to get into the studio live band because I keep coming up with stuff you know in this time which is which is really cool so we had what was that one we make it waves 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 artist waves we make it waves 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 artist waves that could be the intro yes artist waves we got a new you know <laughs> yes Ooh, this is this is the best can we can we say we i hope we can save this after i'll yeah. record that real quick and send it to you but i look forward to uh, following up with you after this live interview and shout outs to everyone that tuned in and just staying in touch jeff for sure man i think you got something cool going on and thank for you sure. for what and promoting the music with the, with everything it's so crucial I, I just had a conversation with someone yesterday and they're like they're like yo i really like this band the hip abduction shout outs to the hip abduction have you heard of those guys check I've out i've heard music. of them but i can't say i know their stuff very well and someone was like, I, I love this band, Hip Abduction, but they just, they don't have many views on YouTube and what and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, here's what you can do. You're really into their music. Like, join the Facebook group online. Shout out to the K-Bong hitters, my Facebook group online. Join the Facebook group online. Like, engage, comment on their YouTube videos. Get on their Instagram. Share their stuff on your stories. Like, it's the fans, man, that are so important. And I can't thank the fans enough for what you guys do in sharing our music, man. It is, it is amazing. It is amazing. Without you guys, we, we couldn't, you know, we wouldn't be doing it. We wouldn't have had the exposure that we have. And it inspires, inspires me to keep writing, you know, all those comments. If someone threw a comment, like I was having a bad day and I put middle of the ocean on and I'm now having a great day and I'm dancing around my living room. That is inspiration for me. As, and it, to write the next one, which is we're making waves, 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 <laughs> making waves, 
I want to surf all day and make waves. Yes. Uh, I got I got to I got to go I got to start songwriting man I'm feeling it right now. <laughs> I got to let you go just so you go finish that song. <laughs> So this this has been fantastic. I could talk to you all day long. I really appreciate all the the time and the uh, transparency and just taking some time to chat with with me and Artist Waves today. Um, Good to hear music is such a great song. It's so important right now. Thanks for all your positive vibes and and all your uh, all of the spirit that you you inject through your your music and your community. Thanks so much to everyone for tuning in. I saw a lot of really uh, great comments, great questions. Some people in there. Uh, Kelly G, Jakey Boy, Lil L, Maddie Duke, all of you people. Um, K Bonk, thanks so much, man. This was uh, this was a blast. Of course, of course, it was a real honor. And if you guys aren't following uh, Artist Waves, check out Artist Waves. I before this interview, I checked it out, man. And you got you got so many great articles on on Three Eleven and, and Michael Franti, and you had Incubus and shout outs to the Foo Fighters for the twenty fifth anniversary. I mean, really big names. And so I'm honored to be part of this and in the mix with this and. Everyone else out there, continue to stay in touch with, with me on the K-Bong Music Instagram. Tune into my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash K-Bong Music. Subscribe there. Get in touch. I got kbongmusic.com slash shop. I just did a 20% off sale on a bunch of merch, which is code TAKE20. It's still going on, so you guys can go and, and get some stuff there. And just continue to stay in touch with me. I'm going live a few times this week, and I got a bunch of cool things going on. So thank you guys for tuning in and staying in touch. Really appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. K-Bong Live, and, and you have some of the best art, too, and the, the merch that goes with your stuff. So, yes, please do check out everything K-Bong. His live streams coming up are the best. They're, they just make you feel good and, and make you happy. So, cheers, man. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Look forward to speaking with you soon. There's going to be an article transcribed to some degree of this, too, that's going to be on artistwaves.com. So, much more okay. between us to come. Right on, Jeff. Thanks for having me again. I really appreciate you guys. Everybody have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Stay healthy, stay safe. K-Bong, Jeff Gora from Artist Waves. Peace. We're making waves, waves. Take waves. us home. <laughs> Peace, everybody. Much love. Thanks, man.